In tonight's headlines, police visit the site of a fatal construction accident to collect materials for checks and possible prosecution. Chris Tank says sedition, theft of state secrets and external intervention are the public's main concerns about Article 23. And HSBC reports a record pre-tax profit for last year and plans a new 2 billion US dollar share buyback. Detectives from the Kowloon East Regional Crime Unit visited a construction site in Kai Tech one day after two workers were crushed to death by scaffolding falling from a height. Part of the scaffolding erected on the upper floors of the Pano Harbour development was visibly missing. Officers took away construction materials for examination and possible prosecution. One worker was on the scaffolding when it became detached from the building and fell 19 floors to the ground yesterday afternoon. She remains in intensive care with serious injuries, while two other female workers were crushed to death. Engineers suspect some workers had cut corners by temporarily removing devices which harnessed the scaffolding in place. The Labour Department has suspended work at the site while launching citywide spot checks on bamboo scaffoldings in the coming two weeks. One week before the public consultation on Article 23 ends, Security Minister Chris Chang and Deputy Justice Chief Horace Chang joined other officials to meet lawmakers. Following the hour-long exchange, Chang told reporters that the public was particularly concerned about acts with seditious intent, theft of state secrets and external intervention. He said the legislation only targets those who aim to endanger national security. They include external forces and some Hong Kongers who fled the city. In the 110-page consultation document, the government proposed raising the penalty for seditious intention and possession of seditious publication. Last September, five speech therapists were sentenced to 19 months in prison each for conspiring to publish and distribute seditious publications. They were behind a series of children's books that featured sheep protecting their village from wolves. Tang said the court ruled that the defendants had used misleading publications to make people distrust the authorities, incite hatred, or even overthrow the government. He added that existing penalties may not be enough to reflect the impact of such offenses on national security. Chang sidestepped questions on whether the bill could be tabled in the Legislative Council next month, saying draft legislation would be completed as soon as possible. Hong Kong. 能不能夠處理到的一些案件呢,其實是需要國家來到出手的。Lawmaker Ng Chao Pei suggested that some major cases under Article 23 be transferred to the mainland if Hong Kong is unable to tackle them, even though the legislation is local. Janice Lo, Cable News. was a mixed bag of news from HSBC as Europe's biggest lender announced its results for 2023. The London Bank, which derives the majority of its profits in Asia, reported a pre-tax profit of 30.3 billion US dollars last year, up 78% from 2022. Whilst a record the earnings still missed market estimates of $34 billion. Higher interest rates enabled net interest income, or NII, to jump 20% to $35.8 billion. Other sources of revenue, such as wealth management and banking services, surged 50%, taking total revenue to $66.1 billion, up 30%. But things were not as rosy on a quarterly basis. Fourth quarter profit stood at around $1 billion, plummeting 81% from a year ago. The slide was mainly due to a $3 billion impairment charge 
on its holdings in Bank of Communications, which is 19% owned by HSBC. With respect to BOCOM, that was very much a technical accounting uh, adjustment that had to be processed in Q4. We had signaled in previous quarters that uh, we were close to where the value in use calculation was, was going to drop below our carrying value. It does not affect um, our view on China at all. Uh, we're a committed investor into China. Um, and it does not affect our capital or distribution capacity. Hong Kong remained the bank's biggest single market, contributing to over one-third of its profit last year, followed by Britain with 27 percent. The British lender rewarded investors with the fresh $2 billion share buyback and a fourth-quarter dividend of 31 U.S. cents per share. Meanwhile, subsidiary Hang Seng Bank posted a 58 percent increase in net profit to 17.8 billion Hong Kong dollars. It announced a fourth interim dividend of $3.20 per share. Raymond Yang, Cable News. The Consumer Council has posed as a potential customer and approached 59 home renovation companies and 14 online matching platforms to get quotations for predefined work. It found out that 75% of the businesses adopted a lax attitude. For instance, when asked whether a wall could be removed, the firms just looked at the floor plan and did not check the structure of the wall. The watchdog also found that most quotes lacked sufficient details to enable customers to make comparisons. It recommended a standard form quotation for better customer protection. The standard template is a very systematic template. Many other countries. Um, they already have this kind of uh, requirements of using standard templates, which including not just the pricing of the project, but also the scheduling of payments, and also the warranties and guarantees, and also other details. So with all these being standardized and written down in the template, it will dramatically decrease the possibility of having different, different kind of conflicts and disputes uh, between consumers and traders. The United States has been criticized by Arab countries and some of its allies after it again vetoed a draft resolution calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. Thirteen other members of the United Nations Security Council voted in favor, while Britain abstained. Chinese Ambassador Zhang Jun expressed strong disappointment with the U.S., saying Palestinians in Gaza face more suffering without a truce. His views were echoed by Algeria, which drafted the proposal. Today, every Palestinian is a target for death, extermination and genocide. We should out ask ourselves how many innocent lives must be sacrificed before the Council deems it necessary to call for a ceasefire. As diplomats in New York debated, at least 17 more Palestinians lost their lives in an Israeli airstrike in the central Gaza town of Deir el Balah. More than 29,000 Palestinians in the besieged enclave have been killed since October, when Israel began retaliating for a Hamas attack. Paris was among a number of European capitals where protests were held as a court in London won up a two-day hearing on the latest attempt by whistleblower Julian Assange to avoid extradition to the United States. The WikiLeaks founder faces 175 years in jail if found guilty in the U.S. of leaking military secrets, including footage showing an American helicopter mowing down civilians in Iraq. Assange is in detention in a high-security prison near London. His lawyers argued that the extradition bid was politically motivated. They said he was being prosecuted for publishing information that was truthful and of important public interest. 
if Julian Assange is successfully extradited to the US, journalists the world over are going to have to watch their back. They're going to have to look off over their shoulder because they're going to have to worry that they too could be next if they publish material that demonstrates serious human rights violations or accusations of war, alleged war crimes. Um, they too will have to face the risk that they could be extradited to somewhere like the US or other countries to face nefarious prosecutions like this one. Medical services across South Korea remain disrupted for a second straight day as junior doctors continue to strike. 정부는 집단 사직을 하거나 Public safety minister Lee Sang-min said the doctors have been ordered to return to work. They face prosecution if they ignore the call. The industrial action was taken after the government decided to increase enrollment in medical schools to tackle the shortage of doctors. But the strikers said the measure would not be cost effective and universities would struggle to cope with the surge in the number of students. Local developers received a shot in the arm amid growing calls for scrapping or reducing stamp duty to revive the flagging real estate sector. The Hang Seng Property Index gained 3% to hit a one-month high. New World Development led the charge, rising 4.6%. Sun Hong Kai Properties jumped 3.7% and Henderson Land was 2.8% higher. The Hang Seng Index gained 1.6% to close at a seven-week high. HSBC, however, retreated despite posting a record annual profit. The giant lender shed 3.8% after its 2023 results failed to meet market expectations.